Ladies and gentlemen, hello. My name is Josh Strife Hayes. I am a PC Netherwinter player, and in this video, I'd like to talk about the Cloak Tower. Now, this will not be a guide on how your class should specifically run the Cloak Tower. It's going to be a guide all about the Cloak Tower itself, the enemies you'll find there, how to find the two hidden treasure chests at the end of it, and why everyone always speed runs it instead. So let's queue up first of all. I'm going to go to the private queue and choose dungeon. Now, the Cloak Tower normally will need three people, level 12 plus. Thankfully, in regular dungeon difficulty, I'm able to solo it quite easily, so I can talk to you guys all about it. Now, I won't be taking almost any damage from the enemies, so I can talk about all the mobs and where they are. First thing you'll notice about the Cloak Tower if you queue up, especially in random, is that everyone always seems to speedrun it really quickly. The reason for this is level 70 characters are trying to get their daily astral diamonds by doing random dungeon queues, and the Cloak Tower is one of the most popular dungeons to do that in. So we're going to run forward first of all, and you'll see on the left hand side is a vendor. This guy is going to sell you all the potions and all the kits you need. There are lots of hidden uh, skill checks in this dungeon, I'll try and show you where they all are. First of all, on the right hand side, we're going to meet the enemy that we will see the most often, the Orc Drudge. Now these guys are not difficult at all. They are simply going to run forward and hit you with a very basic melee attack. In large groups, they might give you some trouble if you're a lower level, but higher level should have no problem at all. Now I've actually got some damage reflection on my character, so these guys are going to kill themselves by just attacking me. I don't even have to do anything. But one shot should be all it takes. Orc drudges are all over the place. There's some more over here guarding the door, and this is where we need to go. Just take them out however you want to take them out. Now when we run down this part of the corridor, you'll see on the left hand side just there is a trap. This dungeon is littered with traps and they will all get you if you don't know where they all are. If I run forward and ignore it, it'll stab me like that. And here comes the Beastmaster and his wolves. Now there's a couple of Beastmasters in this dungeon. Beastmasters are always accompanied by two wolves. The wolves attack you melee, the Beastmasters also hit melee, but they're a little bit tougher. You'll see they've got three specific health bars instead of just one. Take these guys out however you want to take them out. Run across and head forward to the very first of many staircases. You'll see some Orc Drudges and then some Axe Throwers. This is the first time we've seen the Axe Thrower. I think the Axe Thrower actually just killed himself through my damage reflect. Axe Throwers are exactly the same as Drudges, but they have a ranged attack instead of a melee attack. And before we head down the steps, if you run over here to the left behind this pile of rocks, you'll see a Dungeoneering skill check. If you've got the kit or if you've got the ability, feel free to get that. You can run down the steps, or you can do what everyone else does and just jump off. When you jump off, a mob will spawn, some axe throwers and some drudges. These guys have survived this time. They'll stay, if, they'll stay away from you, they'll keep their distance, and they'll just throw axes at you. Thankfully, my damage reflect is more than enough to take care of them. Run down into the corridor, into the apprentice chambers. You'll be charged by some drudges and the first battle-tested orc. Now, the battle-tested orc is one of the first characters you'll... See that attack just there? That attack just there is an AOE attack, or area of effect, and hits all in front of him in a large arc. Now I can stand in it and not take any damage, but if I want to avoid any damage at all, as soon as the attack starts, just run behind him. Run behind him and you're totally safe in this area. The battle-tested orc is going to keep swinging at you and doing that annoying red attack. Just dodge or run behind. You can see he's been joined by a couple of drudges and an axe thrower. If we get close to an axe thrower, Sometimes they run away, sometimes they stand their ground. Take care of these mobs and run forward. Now you can't go left or right, it's blocked off by rocks. So just run down and kick the door in. When you kick the door in and charge into this room, I said we'd see a lot of drudges, you've got four of them just there. Take them out however you want to take them out. There's a drudge over there in the corner. And then this should be the first time. Nope, we've got some axe throwers and some more drudges. When we're in this room, over in the corner you have an Arcana skill kit, but see that little spike in the wall just there? If you stand too close to the Arcana skill kit, you'll get stabbed, so try and avoid that trap. Running down, drudge, drudge, battle tested orc. Simple melee mob. You guys shouldn't have any problems taking these. They're actually dazed right now, due to a few of my feats and powers. You guys shouldn't have any problems just taking these guys out. If you run around the corner, 
you'll see a religion skill kit check as well. Now I don't have any of the kits because I don't normally pick them up, but at least you know where they all are. You can make the choice. Follow the sparkly path. Again, you can't go left or right. Now before you run straight toward this door, please pay attention. There's a trap on the right and a trap on the left. You run straight forward, you're normally pretty safe. You stray too close to the right or the left, you'll get stabbed by both of those. Kick the door in and run forward. Ah, the Eye of Groomsh. This is the first time we've met the Eye of Groomsh. He has both a ranged magical attack and a melee spear stab attack. He'll lift his spear up in the air, like that, if he's doing the regular magic attack. Just move out of the red, or he'll run towards you and stab you with his spear like that, if he's doing the melee attack. You stand near him, he tends to prioritise the melee attack. If you get far away, sometimes he'll charge at you and then finish off with a powerful stab. Uh, they can be an issue if you're on your own and you're low level, but if you're in a group, you should be absolutely fine. Now the game is telling me to go right. The sparkly path is taking me right, but instead I'm going to go left because when you get to the end of this dungeon, there will be possibly three treasure chests. One of those is guaranteed from the boss. Two of them you have to create by finding six secret items, and this is the way to the first of those six secret items. Run into the room, four drudges. Just take them out. As soon as you take them out, you'll see some axe throwers have spawned over there, and some axe throwers and drudges are running into the room behind you. Again, not a major issue. But while you're in this room, head over to the desk. On the desk, you'll see a green crystal. Pick it up. What we're looking for is three different colored crystals and three pieces of flora and fauna. There's a mushroom, some berries, and I think a, a bitter cap. I'll find it when we when we get to it. I'll show you where they all are. That's the only crystal we need from this part. So now we can keep following the path. As we follow the path down here, a beastmaster, accompanied by his usual wolf, will charge. Nothing specific you need to know about this. Just just be aware there's going to be another beastmaster. You can't go left. It's blocked off by rocks, but you can go right. Group of drudges, push through them. I'm not going to take too long killing them now because you guys know what axe throwers look like, you know what drudges look like, and you know what battle-tested orcs look like. That's pretty much all we're going to face in this dungeon. As we enter the library, drudges, battle-tested orc. Big group. Run over here, they'll charge you. Now there's a couple of ways to get through the library. One is a shortcut. We can follow the path and run all the way through in between the bookcases, or we can just turn to our left, run up this tilted bookcase here, and over. The library is a very small maze, which is going to be a theme in this dungeon. There are quite a few mazes. We don't need to run all the way through it. We can just run up the bookcase, over the top, and through that door over there. But if you absolutely demand on seeing everything else, there's a single eye of Grooch. There's almost nothing back here, but some battle-tested orcs and some more drudges, and then another battle-tested orc. You don't need to fight these mobs. There is no point in fighting them. What I should have done is a treasure chest if you want to get it. Now, very important note about treasure chests, guys. As always, when you hover your cursor and the little aiming receptacle over the chest, if the bag icon appears, see the little kind of sack icon that's appeared? If that has appeared, it's a real treasure chest. If that does not appear, it's a mimic. Please unless you're with a group that can handle mimics don't open them so we're back at the start we're going to run forward jump up run over here jump down and we've found the shortcut through there's more eye of groomshers and more judges remember eye of groomshers were the wizards that had that magical ranged attack here is the next staircase i said there were going to be quite a few of these staircases taking us down and drudges 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 simple melee group you can follow the stairs down, or you can do what everyone does and just jump. Now this is probably the first, it's not even an official mini-boss, but it's the first more difficult enemy. See this savage just here? The Eye of Groomsh we've met before. That's going to be the wizard that uses the ranged attack on us and tries to stab us with the, uh, with the spear. So I'm going to take this guy out just so I can talk about the savage. The savage. He will swing that massive club at you, and if he hits you, he will flatten you into the ground like that. So this will interrupt any attacks or animations that you've got going on. It's purely melee. He hits you, knocks you around, flattens you into the ground, and punches you. If you are a squishy character, if you haven't got the armor, please don't take this guy on. 
stay at a distance, let your team deal with him, let the tank get up close and personal. Tank, it's your job to distract this guy and sort him out. What I'm going to do right now is just kill him now you've seen him. Once they're all dealt with, you can kick down this door. We're getting into the lower part of the dungeon now. If you have any more questions about this dungeon, you can normally find me on Twitch, by the way, twitch.tv forward slash Josh Strife Hayes. Feel free to pop in and say hi. We're about to take on the first mini boss. Now, before we take on the first mini boss, we can turn left, run down here, and we have a dungeoneering skill kit checkpoint. I found some profession stuff. Once we've got that, let's take on the first mini boss, Macred the Foul. Here we go. So Macro the Fell, we've got a couple of attacks under his belt. I'm going to let him attack me, just so you can see. First thing is, a ranged attack, just like the Eye of Groomch have. Then he'll stab us with a spear, and then do the attack quicker. If it helps, you can just think of this guy as a slightly bigger Eye of Groomch, maybe combined with the melee power of one of the battle-tested orcs. There's no real mechanics to this fight. He's got three attacks, you can see him stabbing us, slowly, you can see him stabbing us quickly, and using that magical ranged attack. Now as you get his health down, he will spawn additional enemies, or adds, as we say. So I'll do one attack to him, that'll burn some of his life off. Ah, you see these battle-tested orcs have jumped into the arena now. As Macred the Fowl's health gets lower and lower, the battle-tested orcs will first of all spawn from both sides of this room, and then they'll spawn from this portcullis gate over here. So I'm going to get rid of these battle-tested orcs, and then I'm going to hit Macred one more time, and you'll see another spawn of enemies. Here we go. Load of drudges spawn over from the portcullis. That's pretty much all you've got to deal with. Two spawns, battle-tested orcs, and drudges. And then just burn Macred down. There's nothing mechanical about the environment, there's nothing specifically difficult about it. Now once you have killed him, do not leave this room just yet. There are two important items we need to pick up. The first is on the left over here. You'll see it says Starflower. Pick up the Starflower, then turn right around, run over here to the other desk, and pick up the Argate Crystal. Once you've got the Starflower and the Argate Crystal, you can carry on. Ah, it's a black pole there. Brilliant. Run through the corridor, and get ready for a Beastmaster and two wolves to ambush you just around the corner. Once we've got rid of these guys, you'll be happy to know, we can push this boulder out the way, and we're actually at the first bonfire. If any of you play Dark Souls, you know how fantastic bonfires can be. In the bonfire, we now step forward into the Azure Garden. Now, I really personally love this, the graphics of this. I think it's beautiful. It's really interesting. It feels so different and so interesting. A couple of drudges to meet us down in the water. You should know what to do with those by now. Now, before you run forward, before you follow the path, look slightly to your left over here, and you'll see these crystals sparkling. Harvest the blue crystal. That's what we need. We've now picked up the blue crystal. If we look in our inventory, we should now have all three colored crystals. We've got the blue crystal just there, we've got the red crystal, and we picked up the green crystal earlier. So we are definitely going to get one of the two extra treasure chests because we've got all the crystals we need. Now we can just follow the sparkly path. There's an Eye of Groomsh, Ranged Wizard, and two melee drudges. And we just follow the path. Nothing specific to worry about. Now, please, when you get to the edge here, you might think, oh, it's dangerous, I might fall. You actually can't. I'm running forward right now and jumping. You cannot fall off the edge. Lots of drudges, all going to rush you. We're getting even further now into the caves. Now when we enter this room here, the Botanical Gardens, this is an important room because there's another one of those hidden items. So we walk in, you can turn to the right and go down here, below the main area. There is almost no reason to do this at all. There used to be uh, a mini boss down here, there isn't any more. But if you come down and turn back on yourself, you can find a nature skill kit, a skill check under there. You can, if you want to, then run over here and actually just jump up this little jumping puzzle to get back up. There's no reason to do this, it's just another way into the room. 
I'll go back to the start of the room so you can see where we came in. So we came in over here. Instead of going right, if we go left, you'll see some battle-tested orcs, a beastmaster and some wolves. The game's starting to throw quite a few more enemies at you at once. Now we follow the sparkly path, kill all the drudges as we go, and the sparkly path is taking us that way toward the kind of red alcove. But before we go that way, there are two things in this room we need. Face the red alcove, and you'll see to my right hand side right now are some blue sparkly flowers. The glow berries. Pick those up and then turn 180 around and walk forwards, and you'll see over here we've got the ginger shroom. Now, sometimes the ginger shroom is dropped by the boss that we fought, Macred. Sometimes. So, always be on the lookout for mini bosses dropping some of these important items. If the mini bosses don't drop them, they'll be in the locations that I've shown you. We run forward, axe thrower. Drudge. Remember, this is the ranged guy, these are the melee guys. Once again, you actually can't run off the edge, so you're totally safe. I think this area is so pretty. This is so beautiful. I love the hue, I love the colour of it. I love the kind of ambience that I'm getting. Two battle tested orcs. Melee kind of elite units are going to rush at you, try and do some damage to you. Take care of them and run down. Now you might think, ooh, do we need to hunt around for a red crystal? Nope, because we found the red crystal earlier. And then when we get to this gate, we're actually at the next mini boss. Kick it down and run forward. Throg the Ravenous. Let's talk about Throg now. We had a wizard mini boss earlier, so it's time for a melee mini boss. Throg the Ravenous is going to dual wield weapons and just charge at us. He has the same attack that the battle tested orcs have, where he does that kind of red damage arc in front of him. So if we just stand here and watch for a sec, you'll see him hit down. You can see his health going down despite me not doing anything, that's because of my damage reflection. So he'll keep hitting us, just charging at us. If we run away and try and get some distance, he can make up the distance pretty quickly. So if you're a very low defense, low level player, yeah, see, there's the charge. There's the charge. Maybe get the tank to grab this guy's aggro first before you do. Nothing mechanically different or difficult about the environment we're in. Just kill Throg. Do some damage. Kill him. Once he's killed, you get some seals of the adventurer, because I'm doing the regular dungeon difficulty, and some enemies will spawn over by that doorway. We're going through that doorway, so let's kill him and keep going. Kick down the next barrier, and you'll find yourself, thankfully, at the next bonfire. However, the next bonfire is guarded by some drudges and some axe throwers. You should be well versed in killing them by now. Follow the corridor through, the little cave. There is no other way to go, so keep following. Some drudges will ambush you around this corner. There's three of them. And when we leave this area now, there's a small mob of enemies to our right-hand side. So we leave, and there they are. Two little drudges. Now, we need to be going down the steps, but if you want to, you can turn around, run the opposite way, and find a thievery skill or check. Up the steps, a beastmaster and two wolves have just ran. So sort them out and then head down the steps. We're getting toward the end of the dungeon now. Now when we walk down the steps you'll notice there are some battle-tested orcs in the middle of the corridor. There are also four jail cells on either side. I'm gonna run forward and show you. See these walls here? These walls are jail cells. As soon as we kill these battle-tested orcs these walls will open up and more enemies will attack us. Let's watch. So we kill the battle-tested orcs, and then the walls open up, and we get charged by more drudges. It's not a problem, but if you're not expecting it, it can be a bit of an ambush. Sort those guys out. And carry on. Go down the steps. You can't go left. There's nothing down there. You can go right. Now you'll notice at the top of the steps, there's another trap. The closer you get to it, you get stabbed by a spear, so watch out for that. This is where the game does become a bit of a maze, so please keep the sparkly path on. When you walk through the destroyed wall, you'll see you're now in a place called Labyrinth, and it really does live up to its name. There's a lot of false leads, a lot of dead ends, and behind me, a group of enemies. So as soon as you walk around, I'll show you that again. As soon as you walk around this corner, turn left straight away, and there's a group of enemies just here. You want to take those guys out. If you follow the path, you won't get lost. 
If you don't follow the path, you might discover a skill check or two, or get lost, one of the two. Now, there's nothing down that way. But we're gonna follow it around here. And again, I'm just gonna show you that there's nothing in the other, other ways. There is one reason you might not go through this area and you might turn left and go through the portcullis. When the portcullis opens up, some drudges will attack you, but run into this room instead and kill all four of them. When they all die, the wall behind you will open up and you'll get a treasure chest. Now remember our check for treasure chest, check the little bag icon is there. When the bag icon is there, it's safe to open up and loot. Once you've looted it, run back into the labyrinth, continue following the sparkly path. Now you can go left, that's the way you need to go, but if you go right instead and run all the way to the end of the corridor, you'll find another skill check, guarded of course by another trap. Let's run back and follow the way we're meant to go. We're very nearly at the end boss now. We're going to open the portcullis on the right, and as soon as we go into this corridor, instantly assaulted by some drudges. Once we've got rid of these, there's a few more around the corner. So four, two drudges and what look like two axe throwers. Once they're killed, you've done everything you need to do and you're at the final boss. Run down the corridor and run toward the gates. To activate the final boss fight, click on this little axe that's embedded into this wooden standard. Now I'm going to let the boss attack me a couple of times and talk you through all the attacks you can do and then the mechanics because this is the first time when the environment is actually going to change very very slightly. We're going to get some ads summoned but from different places. So Vansi Bloodscar is a melee warrior with a little bit of magic. That circle doesn't mean he's doing a magical attack, it means he's charging you with a melee attack. If I keep running away from him you'll see that red circle appears every now and again and it means he's charging to that location. There's the big cleave attack, similar to the uh, the orcs. If I keep running away, you'll see all the attacks he's got available to him. Running and charging, running and charging. If I stand and let him hit me, he doesn't do that much. I mean, he's probably about two or three times harder than one of the actual orcs. If you do let him hit you with the final hit of the cleave attack, or you let him charge at you, he will knock you around. Watch this. If I stand here, he will knock me backwards. And if I stand in the red, he will hit me up. This will interrupt any attack animation that you've got going on. Now, if you look around this room, you'll see one wooden entrance pathway, two entrance pathways, and three entrance pathways. These are used to allow drudges, battle-tested orcs, and axe throwers into the arena. And those enemies will spawn when Vanti gets to a certain amount of health. So I'm going to hit him once, and you'll see his health drops a little bit. We're going to try and get his health down slowly. As his health drops, we're going to... There they go. We keep an eye out, and we see a load of drudges enter the arena. These only spawn when Vanti's health gets to certain levels. So don't worry about being flooded by them. And once they're dead, they stay dead until he gets to his next level of health. You see halfway, we've now got some, there we go, some drudges entering the arena from over here and over here. So two of the walkways become active once he hits half health. So he's getting more and more dangerous. Now once he's killed, or once he's down even further, I don't want to hit him too much in case I kill him, you'll see we get more we get some drudges entering from the center. Fancy's health's getting lower. When his health gets very low, we get more from over there and more from over there. So as Vancy gets closer to death, even more ads are going to run at us. But they're very, very simple. They're very easy. They're very low health. Gather them all together and use an AoE attack like this. Just get them all together, hit them all at the same time. And then when Vancy's ready to die, just take him out. You see the whole dungeon took just over a quarter of a million damage. That's not, uh, not that much. So we take any drop Vancey has, if you're lucky enough to get something good, and we run down the final staircase. Now running down the final staircase, there are four important things in this bottom room. The first important thing is the exit portal. We don't want to use that yet. Do not go there yet. The next important thing is the treasure chest. 
Now I don't have a regular dungeon key because I don't do the regular dungeons much anymore, but that is where you would use the regular treasure chest. Now before we leave, I spoke about two secret chests. You'll see there's a pedestal over here. If we run over to the pedestal, it's asking us to put the Argate crystal, and then it will ask for the blue crystal, and then the green crystal. Put all three crystals there, we spawn a treasure chest. We can open the chest, and it's just a basic regular chest, guys. There's nothing amazing in it. But we turn around 180, run all the way to the other side, and this is where we can put the three pieces of flora and fauna. The glowberries, the ginger shroom, and the starflower will spawn another treasure chest. Exactly the same as the one on the other side of the room. Great if you're a lower level. Higher levels probably won't bother collecting any of those. That was everything you need to know about the Cloak Tower. Thank you for watching. I will see you on Twitch sometime soon. Take care and have a good day.